January 16, 2022. Uh, this is uh, Pastor William A. Freeman Senior, Mount Zion Baptist Church in the city of Chesapeake, Virginia. We are so happy to be able to come back uh, to you again and share uh, with you uh, this day. We're here as we have been here recently in our home office sharing with you. Uh, most of you know our videos are usually uh, recorded outside, but here on the uh, East Coast in Virginia, we are currently looking at rain and of course the whole East Coast is looking at some parts of snow and heavy snow, but we here in Virginia, uh, just this part of Virginia, just looking at a rain event, but we're certainly glad to have you here with us today. We don't want to prolong time too long today. We just want to say we're so happy to have each one here uh, that is watching our video, wherever you may be found, anywhere on the, in the world. We thank God for you sharing with us. Every time you look at our videos, we pray that you will share, continue to share these videos with other people that they may hear with us, say of the Lord, as we come to you directly from the scriptures of our God. And we uh, try not to do anything but to speak, but to preach and to speak in an exposition, expositional way and to explain the scriptures as thus saith the Lord. And so today we just thank God today for just uh, this chance to share uh, go with us today in Scripture, John chapter 13, just a few verses of Scripture for you. John chapter 13 on this day, beginning at verse number 31. John 13 and 31. Uh, uh, the Apostle John records these words. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye seek me, as I said unto the Jews. Whether I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. Let us pray to God. We thank you today for this opportunity to share with uh, these, your people who shall uh, look at this video, listen to this video. We dear God, we pray you bless each and every family represented. Bless this, your servant, that we might speak what thus saith the Lord, that we may not compromise on the truth, but that we may preach and teach what thus saith the Lord. Dear God, we thank you for yet another day, yet another Lord's Day. Uh, to be able to come in Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk today uh, with you on the subject, loving your brother and sister in Christ Jesus. Loving your brother and sister in Christ Jesus. The Apostle John in the first epistle of John chapter 3, I'm sorry, of John chapter 3, uh, verses 11 through 17, the Gospel of John, gives to the church uh, necessary, necessary, necessary formula of the very foundational truth of what is the true measure of a disciple or follower of Jesus Christ, who is son of the living God. He gives to the church uh, of Jesus Christ the message uh, that Jesus gave to he and the other disciples in the upper room, in that upper room discourse message on the night of Jesus' last supper with his 12 apostles. Uh, this same apostle John writes in the Gospel of John, chapter 13 and verse uh, number 1, these words. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew his hour would come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. The Bible lets us know uh, quite clearly that Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, loved his own unto the end. Uh, even uh, uh, as he was preparing to walk into the pages of history as a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He still would love the disciples all the way to Calvary's old rugged cross. He loved his disciples, his apostles, 
and the followers of the way. He also loves all of his brethren that have accepted him as their eternal savior of their sins. Jesus Christ, God in the second person of the Holy Trinity, he is love. And love of God and love of our neighbors as ourselves are the two commandments that the law and the prophets are hung upon. That's Matthew chapter 22. Verse 37 through 40. Here, herein is the issue uh, that all persons who have made a confession or a profession to be a Christian believer in Christ Jesus is measured by. Here is what I would like to refer to as the, the acid test or the litmus test. And it is the critical factor if you would, that Jesus Christ uses to distinguish a true, born-again, spirit-filled believer in Christ Jesus from a false, lip-syncing, false uh, confessional-making unbeliever who is a false tear of Satan's kingdom. Jesus Christ, my friends, uh, makes a statement to the disciples, to the true disciples of his. After Judas is carried, the son of Simon had left the upper room to go and to betray Jesus Christ for 30 pieces of silver. To betray him to the Jewish uh, religious leaders who would uh, betray Jesus to the Romans for crucifixion on the cross. Jesus Christ lets uh, the false apostle, uh, the false unloving traitor named Judas, uh, he, 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 he lets him go out the upper room door after having received the sop of the bread as a traitor, as a deceiver, as a false apostle of Satan, and as a betrayer of the Lord Jesus, who had, who had already dipped uh, the sop of the bread and had given it to the apostle. This false apostle, Judas, and by doing this, he gave the signal to the true apostles as to who would betray him and who would be exposed as a non-believer in Christ Jesus. You see, in John 13, 34, uh, Jesus reveals uh, to his apostles. In 13, 34 through 37, he reveals to his apostles uh, that are left over after Judas's defection. Uh, the 11 apostles and that were still there after Judas had fallen from grace. He gives, Jesus Christ gives the litmus test for a true conversion and for true discipleship in Christ Jesus. You see, Jesus Christ told the 11 remaining apostles and he is speaking to all who would profess to be followers as his today. He is speaking to those who are fit for the kingdom of God and for those bound for the heavenly abode. Jesus says that a new commandment I give unto you, this is John 13, 34, that I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Watch this. He says, by this, all men shall know that ye are my disciples, if you have love one to another. You see, loving your brother and sister in Christ Jesus is the acid test for distinguishing uh, true believers in Christ Jesus from false confessors and unbelievers who follow Satan. You see, Jesus Christ, God incarnate, gives us the answer to the question of how we can tell, or better yet, how the world uh, can tell, or also how all men or all humanity can tell who are the true disciples of Christ Jesus versus the false Judas-like unbelievers of the devil. You see, Jesus Christ settles the debate of salvational arguments 
concerning the legitimacy, legitimacy of the salvation experience. You see, whether you believe in the doctrine of once saved, always saved, or you are in the free grace camp, or whether you are in the camp of the perseverance of the saints, or you follow the Lordship doctrine, Jesus Christ, my friend, makes it clear to all that will be called believers of Christ Jesus. He makes it clear to all who call themselves born again Christians that unless you love one another as he has loved us, then you are guilty as Judas was and you have no legitimate right to call him your savior, neither to profess him as Lord of all. Jesus Christ tells all of his disciples. He tells all his followers. He tells all his believers and all professors of his name and of his salvation in God through him that ye all are to love one another as I have loved you. That ye also love one another. You see, my friends, loving your brother and sister in Christ Jesus is not a suggestion by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But Jesus tells the 11 apostles and us here today that this is a new commandment. And it is a new commandment administered by the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. And not only is it a commandment of Christ, but it's backed by the heavenly authority of God the Father who sits on his holy throne. I want you to listen to me today. You see, there is no bargaining to be had in regards to this godly commandment. There is no debate to be won by any group of protesters of God's holy word. This is the word of the Lord. This is God's holy commandment. See, church, Jesus knew that Judas is carrying was the traitor, but there was the traitor, and that Judas is carrying was the betrayer and hater of him, and that Judas hated all things that were represented in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Jesus knew that Judas Iscariot was a false apostle who was bound for the flames of all uh, mighty hell. Uh, he knew, Jesus knew that Judas was a pretender in Christ Jesus. Judas was an illegitimate believer in Christ Jesus. The same apostle tells us in 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 19, he says that they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all, watch this, of us. The Apostle John tells us that Judas is carried went out from the other 11 apostles as if he was a true apostle and believer in Christ Jesus. Watch this. Yet he was not truly a follower and true apostle of Jesus Christ. See, we have a lot of Judases that are pretending to be believers in Christ. A lot of people that are pretending that they are saved, but yet they don't love the brethren. They don't love the Christian brothers and sisters. And Jesus said, that's how the world will know that you are one of my disciples if you have love one towards another. How dare you say that you are a believer in Christ and you hate your own brother that you see on a daily basis? How can you love a God you have never seen and say you hate your brother? The Bible says you are a liar. I didn't say it, the Bible said it. And the truth is nowhere to be found in you. See, 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 see. Uh, there is, there will be no doubt 
that if Judas was a true disciple, he would have continued with the apostles. But they, uh, the Bible says, uh, Judas went out, left the true apostleship, and exhibited his true propensity and love of Satan, of money, and rather than a lasting true love of Jesus Christ. Thusly, this manifested or revealed the true fact of Judas's treacherous heart and of his betraying spirit towards the Lord Jesus Christ. He was not truly of the faith, neither was Judas a true believer in God's holy son, Jesus Christ. You see, church, uh, you see, church, the heart for God that we exhibit and the true condition of the heart spiritually will be exposed and revealed by our love or by our hatred of our Christian brothers and sisters. Jesus tells us in John 13, 5, what the end result is in keeping his commandment to love one another as he loved us, that he also loved one another. You see, my friend, Christ, Christ, the ultimate result. You see, church, the ultimate result, the ultimate end result in keeping God's commandment is that by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if you have love towards one another. You see, in 1 John, Chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. This same Apostle John that wrote the Gospel according to John, this same evangelist wrote these words. Listen to these words. He said, we know that we have passed from death unto life. Why is that, Apostle John? Because we love the brethren. Then he went on to say, He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. We listen to that. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother, watch this, is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Then in John chapter 15, verses 12 through 14, Jesus Christ again reiterates his godly command. His commandment to all true believers in Christ Jesus. He says, this is my commandment. Do you understand what a commandment means? It's not a suggestion. It's not what you feel is best. It's not what you can uh, make up in your uh, theological discussion or your theological debate or your religious fervor. But a commandment is what God says and commands for us to do. It's what Jesus Christ lays down as the very, very foundation for our salvation in the Lord. He said, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. In order for us to have the love of God in us, in order for us to truly have the love of Jesus in our heart, we got to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. What else did Jesus say? He said, greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. He also said, ye are my friends. Watch this. If ye do whatsoever I command you. Jesus said, I'm commanding you to do it if you make a claim to your salvation. 
I command you to love your brothers and sisters in Christ if you say you are a disciple of God and a child of God's kingdom. There is no gray area. There is nothing to argue about. There is nothing to discuss. Jesus said it, and we've got to keep his command. If we say we are his disciple, nothing else would do. You are just a false prophet, a pretender, and somebody that needs to go back and get yourself straight with God. If you hate your brothers and sisters in Christ, you can't stand them. You don't want to have no part of them. You don't want to be in the church with them. You think they are less than you. you got to go back and check yourself out because right now you're bound for hell unless you love your brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Jesus said it and not me. You see, the friends of Jesus Christ will love each other as Jesus commands. You see, his true followers are given the command to love each other. You say, well, uh, what about everybody else? He said also, love your enemy. Pray for them that persecute you. Pray for those who call you all manners of name. Pray for those who would rather see you alive, or should I say dead than alive. Why does God leave such a stringent, or gives us such a, what seems to be a stringent requirement? Because God is love. You say, well, I, I follow the commandments, I do this, I do that. He said, well, I came to fulfill the law, and now the love, law of love supersedes anything. He says, you got to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy might, with all thy strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophet. You want to fulfill the law? You can't fulfill the ceremonial law. 613 or so laws. And he said, if you, if you break one, you get to them all. So then, so don't try to say that you can do it because the law in itself was a taskmaster, a schoolmaster. It was, it was given to show us that we are sinners. Yet it could not cover any sin. It could not redeem anyone. The moral law, the Ten Commandments, yes, I do my best to keep them. But every once in a while, we do something wrong. We got to go back to Jesus. The civic law, that's all right. But Jesus' law of love is the law that Christians live by. If you can love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your might, all your strength, and your neighbors yourself, all the other laws will automatically be fulfilled. Are you listening to me today? We've got to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. You see, the friends of God will keep the commandment to love your brother and sister in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ, my friend, loved the world so much that he went to Golgotha's hill to be put on the tree to hang for the sins of all mankind. You see, my friends, he hung, suffered, and he died. He died like a cruel criminal, yet he was sinless until the end. Our true friend, our Savior, and Lord Jesus Christ, laid down his life for his friends so that we might have a right to the precious tree of life. He died, oh, he died until the sun stopped shining. He died and said, it is finished. He said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Gave up the ghost. And died in his humanity. They took him out the cross. Laid him in Joseph's new and borrowed tomb. My friends, he stayed there one day. He stayed there two days. But early on the third day morning, God raised Jesus from the dead with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. Because he lives. My friend, we can face tomorrow. No matter what tomorrow may bring, we don't know, but God knows everything. 
God said, I'll be with you always, even till the end of the world. Jesus made that commitment to us. He said, I'll never leave you, neither will I ever forsake you. When friends and neighbors and those that we believe and think that are on our side, when they turn our back on us, we can always go to Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our friend, and our sustainer to the end. You see, God is love. And we have, my friends, to love our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. By this, all men know and see that we are the true disciples and the true followers of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Maybe you are not a true believer of Jesus Christ. But you know you need to be saved, and you want to be saved, and washed by the blood of the Lamb. Pray this prayer today with me. Just pray to God in heaven these words. Say, Dear God in heaven, I confess that I am a sinner. I am in need of salvation. Just tell them, tell them, Dear God, I confess my sins, and I repent of all my transgressions and sins against heaven. Then say, Lord, save me today by the precious blood of Jesus. Tell God, say, God, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart that, God, you raised Jesus from the dead. Now, my friend, with this confession of faith in what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you, you can now say, I am saved, I am saved, I am saved. Now somebody give God some praise for the salvation of the sinner. My friends, today if you prayed that prayer with me, if you prayed it with faith, then the grace of God has indeed saved you. You're now a new born again Christian believer. Don't let nobody fool you. If you believe by faith and you trust in nothing else but Jesus and what he's done, your soul is saved today. I want you to start praying for your, for your salvation and God will make you strong in your walk with the Lord. Begin reading your Bible. Begin in the New Testament. Read it every day. Read it every day. Then start praying to God the Father in secret prayer. In Jesus' name, on a daily basis. And then I want you to pray to God the Father and ask Him to lead you to a Christian, Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church where you can be discipled by Christian leadership and join in Christian fellowship with fellow baptized believers in Christ Jesus. God has saved you. And now God is going to sanctify you on a daily basis. Just keep your hand in God's hand and love the brethren. And Jesus will do the rest. God bless you. We love you today. But God loves you best. And we say to all, may God bless you and may heaven ever smile upon you and your loved ones. In conclusion, we say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you.